In this problem, we're given the function f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. And then we're going to have to find out a whole lot about this function and in the end graph it. So what type of function is it? Well, it is a quadratic function because it looks like this, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So it's going to be a parabola. And we're going to find out a lot of different information about it. But to do that, I need to find out what a is. a is the coefficient of the x squared term. So remember, there's a negative 1 in front of that. So a is negative 1. b is the coefficient of the x term. So b is 6. And the constant term c equals negative 5. So the first thing we have to figure out is, does this parabola open upward or downward? Well, that all depends on the value of a. If a is greater than 0, it will open up. And if a is less than 0, it will open down. So in our case, a is negative 1, so it's less than 0, so our parabola will open down. The next thing we need to do is find the vertex of the parabola. And remember, the vertex is the highest or the lowest point on the graph. To do that, we need a formula. And it's x equals negative b over 2a. That will give us the x value of the vertex. So let's plug our numbers in. So it's the opposite of what is b. b is 6. So it's negative 6 over 2 times what is a? Negative 1. So it's negative 6 divided by negative 2, which is positive 3. So that's the x value of the vertex. We don't need a formula for the y value. All you have to do is plug the x value that we just found into our function up here. So it's negative, and I'm going to leave the 1 there, times x squared plus 6 times x minus 5. The reason I left the negative 1 in front of the x squared is if you wrote negative 3 squared, a lot of students immediately look at that and think negative 3 times negative 3. No, I'm going to have to square the 3 and then take the opposite. So don't write it this way. This method here is a lot easier. So it's negative 1 times 3 times 3 is 9 plus 6 times 3 is 18, minus 5. So it's negative 9 plus 18 minus 5. So negative 9 plus 18 is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. So our vertex is at the coordinates 3, 4. Now we need to find the axis of symmetry. This is the vertical line that divides the graph in half and always goes through the vertex. Remember, the equation of a vertical line is x equals a constant, some number. And since the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, it's x equal, what's the x-coordinate of the vertex? 3. So that is the axis of symmetry. Now let me go to my next page. And I've already put all the information we've already found here. So now, moving on, we need to find the x-intercepts for my function. Remember, the x-intercepts are when y or f of x equals 0. So I'm going to get 0 equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 5. And now I have to solve this equation. What type of equation is it? A quadratic equation. I'm going to either factor or use the quadratic formula. But before I do either, I need 0 on one side. Do I have that? Yes. 
but I do not like to factor when my x squared is negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. And so I'm going to get negative 1 times 0 is 0. And when I multiply the right-hand side by negative 1, it is just going to reverse all my signs. So instead of negative x squared plus 6x minus 5, I get positive x squared minus 6x plus 5. So let's see if this factors. I need two numbers that multiply to a times c, a is 1, c is 5, so 1 times 5 is 5, and they need to add to the b term, which is negative 6. Since they multiply to a positive, the signs are the same. Since they add to a negative, they're both negative. So will negative 1 and negative 5 work? Those multiply to positive 5, negative 1, plus negative 5. Yay, it equals negative 6. So since A was 1, those are my two factors. So I'm going to get x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 5. And so two numbers multiply to Together to give 0, set each of them equal to 0. So I get x minus 1 is 0, so x is 1, x minus 5 is 0, x equals 5. So I'm kind of running out of room here, but what are my x-intercepts? There's two separate points. The x-coordinate on the first one is 1. What's the y-coordinate? 0. So there's 1, and the other one is Five zero. So there are my x-intercepts. The y-intercept is so much easier to find. It's when x equals zero. So that is f of zero, which is negative zero squared plus six times zero minus five. So it just equals the constant term negative five. So what is my y-intercept? 0, negative 5. Now I need to sketch the graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the vertex. The vertex is 3 and 4. So 1, 2, 3 to the right, 4 up. There's my vertex. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line through the vertex. And that just means my graph is going to be symmetric about that line. The two x-intercepts are 1, 0 and 5, 0. And the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. So that's on the y-axis. So I think that is enough information to sketch my graph. And if I wanted to use the axis of symmetry, what I could do is I could take this point here that is three units to the left, and I could put a matching point three units to the right. So I could have another point on my graph right there. And then all you have to do is try and draw something that looks roughly like a parabola. You're going to have to excuse my drawing with this pad. It's very important that the vertex is the highest point it goes up. And then you put arrows on either end. So there is my parabola. Now we need to find the minimum or maximum value of the function. Well, that always comes from the vertex. So does this graph have a max or a min? A max, so I have a maximum value. And what is it? The maximum value is the highest Point, this graph goes in the y direction. Therefore, it is the y value of the vertex. The maximum value of this function is 4. And now the last thing we have to do is use the graph to find the domain and the range of the function. As you can see from these arrows, it indicates the graph keeps going to the left and the right. 
And for every parabola of this format, the domain is very easy. It always is negative infinity to positive infinity. But the range is not as simple. We have to look at the y values. Are the y values down here on the graph? Yes, the graph keeps going down. So my y values start at negative infinity and go up to the maximum value of the function, which is right here. So what is the y value of the vertex? Four. So the range goes from negative infinity to positive four. You have to put a square bracket on it because it includes the four.